I'm going to be uh, breaking down photosynthesis into a series of short lectures. Uh, starting off with this is an overview and some of the structure of the chloroplast. Then we'll get into some of the, the basics of the reactions of photosynthesis. So what do people often know about photosynthesis or think they know about it? Um, there's an equation that typically people write out where they write down carbon dioxide plus water, and then there's light energy equals, and they've like C6, H1206, uh, indicating a sugar molecule. So what are we seeing here? Um, there's a process called, which we're going to get into, called carbon fixation. That's the removal of carbon from the atmosphere. In this case, it's as carbon dioxide. So plants, which we know plants will take up, right here, take up carbon dioxide. Now, the thing is, uh, we think that plants take up carbon dioxide and, and give off oxygen, but plants uh, also need oxygen um, and they also give off carbon dioxide. So they do both. Okay, plants, all, we'll have talk about chloroplasts, which they have, but plants also have mitochondria right? and they do all the same things that happen in the mitochondria as well. Okay, it's just this is an additional process. So we're just focusing here on the uptake of carbon dioxide, but many people are misled or confused in, in thinking that that's um, the only thing that happens in plants, uh, and it's not. Uh, so the other thing is water uh, is needed for the process. You can see there's carbon and oxygen, but we need hydrogens uh, here to make the sugars, which we'll get into a little bit later, finding that the sugars really aren't, ma aren't made um, in this process. That's also kind of a misunderstanding uh, a bit or oversimplification. We'll talk specifically about the chemical reactions and what is made during the reactions of photosynthesis, and then afterward, how would sugar molecules be made in separate biochemical pathways? But what's the water used for? What do they need the water? Well, obviously, the hydrogens to do it, but, but more than that, uh, the water is going to be a source of electrons. That's going to be really the key uh, to the use of water, which we'll get into later. Now, <clears throat> What is this process of photosynthesis? Well, it's an energy conversion process, really. So it's conversion. A conversion of what? Well, we're going to turn light energy really into chemical energy. Right. How are we going to do that? Or how are plants going to do that? Uh, it's through a process um, called photo excitation. Right. And that's the start of it, and, that, and that's really the main harnessing process. So we're going to get into that in detail as well. So there's going to be a bunch of terminology that you need to be familiar with uh, when it comes to this, and that's what we're kind of getting into now. Just a big, broad overview and introduction of a number of the terms are involved here. So I'll add this in here. Right, they, they also need water, so we'll have to uptake water, which usually comes from the soil drawn up to the roots uh, of a plant. And again, as we talk about this, I'm um, using a plant that you're familiar with, like a tree or some flower growing outside, or grass that you, that you can relate to. But keep in mind, photosynthesis is a process done by single-celled organisms as well. So algae and cyanobacteria uh, carry out photosynthesis, and, and they don't have roots, and they don't have leaves, and they don't have the same kind of overall uh, structural systems, but the chemical pathways are going to be the same. So that's why we're focusing on the, the chemical aspect of it. And then I am going to get into a little bit of the structure um, that has more to do with the, the plant, and then more specifically the cellular level of the chloroplast, which will be common uh, more so among them all. And then we have the energy, right? The light energy. So our light. And you know, the source of that is going to be the sun. Now, you can have artificial. I have artificial light you know, here shining on me. That light could be used to power photosynthesis as well. Okay, What we need is certain wavelengths of light um, to power the process. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. The, the characteristics or properties of light and understanding them is going to is going to be important in understanding uh, the reactions of photosynthesis to a certain degree. We don't need to get into it in a extreme level of detail. This is more of an introductory uh, level course as well, um, but it is something that you should understand. So um, 
let's we'll, we'll kind of get into this now a little bit about uh, I'm just talking about the overview. We'll get about the the wavelengths because that's going to be the, the start of it. So we're getting the the energy conversion, the light energy to chemical. Um, the chemical energy is really going to be um, energy in electrons. We'll break that down for a second here. Uh, we're going to talk about high energy electrons. And then we're talking about chemical bonds. And that's really where the energy is going to be stored. And those chemical bonds are going to be found in molecules that uh, are actually produced by the reactions of photosynthesis, uh, which are going to be um, the molecule G3P. So that's the, if you remember back from uh, glycolysis, which I have in a previous lecture, that's glyceraldehyde. Yeah. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. That's what's actually going to be made by photosynthesis. Uh, we don't really make the, the six carbon sugar here. Um, afterward, the G3P molecules can go through biochemical pathways, um, such, as such as gluconeogenesis, to produce glucose molecules or other sugar molecules um, that can then be stored. You know, a starch, you know, in a plant or uh, make up other sorts of fructose molecules or make up other sorts of things. But uh, it's going to really, this is going to, what we're going to focus on as far as the chemistry goes. As far as the light goes, we'll get, get to this here. So what do you know about light and energy? Well, we talk about visible light, right? That's the light that we could see. And you know about the, the light spectrum, right? The Roy G. Biv. I don't have all the colors, um, the red, orange, yellow, I have some of these, green, the blue, which I do have most of them, here we go, uh, and then I don't have indigo and violet, markers, um, but that's our, our color spectrum uh, that, of visible light. Now, how does that relate to energy? Well, these colors that we can see are related to what's referred to as wavelength. So light energy travels as photonic energy, like a particle, and light travels as a wave. So when we talk about the, the wavelengths of light, referring to the color, what we're talking about is the, the distance, say between the crest of one wave and another, like this. We refer to that by the symbol lambda, which we call wavelength. Now the wavelength is going to be directly related to the energy of the light, okay? Red light is going to have longer wavelengths and violet is going to have the shortest. Uh, in our course, we're not going to have to memorize the specific wavelengths. Typically, we're going from um, about um, 380 at the shortest uh, to the longest wavelengths, which would be the red. Um, we're getting up to like around 700. Um, nanometers okay so are in the red so where the reds are over here the violets are over here so what does that mean so we compare the wavelengths uh, short wavelengths compared to the long wavelengths short wavelengths mean that within a certain distance let's say here and here same thing here and we use about that same distance you can see like one two waves crest here one two three four five waves you know crest here this is just a rough estimate the light with the shorter wavelength has the higher energy and light with the longer wavelengths has low energy okay so this would be lower energy 
and it's just a comparison, just high, you know, high to low, depending on what two wavelengths you're talking about. So the shorter wavelength, the smaller number is actually the higher energy. All right, so keep that in mind. So as the light is coming from the sun, what we're seeing is you know, all different types of uh, electromagnetic radiation, and we're seeing the visible light as well. And in that visible light spectra, the light is moving in waves at all these different wavelengths. Now, all these different wavelengths of light are hitting you know, everything. Um, and in terms of photosynthesis, we're talking about plants. All right. Now, remember, plants are, in general, the color green, we, we tend to think of. And what we want to know is, you know, why? Why are they green? You say, well, because they must have green pigments. And they do. And that's a pigment called chlorophyll. Now the thing is, what we're going to find is that the chlorophyll pigment, though, is typically not going to be absorbing the energy of light. So kind of right in the middle here, right? You see green sort of in the middle of all the, the different colors and in terms of all the different wavelengths okay so here we have the the longer wavelengths and then the shorter wavelengths short ones mean high energy right the longer ones uh, have less energy but they still have energy and the green is kind of right in the middle what we're going to find is that inside a plant typically in the leaves of the plant in this photosynthetic organ or uh, and we'll get into exactly where they are as we get into the chloroplast structure in the next uh, the next lecture. Um, but in the plant leaf are going to be a whole variety of pigments. There's going to be a variety. Pigments that will absorb the red and the orange and the yellow light, pigments that will absorb the blue and the indigo light, and so forth. But the green... The green wavelengths of light, as they come and hit, they're actually reflected. So the interesting thing is, while plants appear green and we associate that color with them, the green wavelengths of light are not typically used at all for energy in photosynthesis. But all the other colors, all the other color wavelengths, tend to be used in photosynthesis. So, and we can also ask one more thing. Of those wavelengths, of those colors, for example, which do you think are the most useful? Which ones would be the most helpful to giving energy to the plant? Would it be, say, red you know, or violet? Well, if red is the long wavelength, which means low energy, and violet is a short wavelength, which means high energy, that would mean the, the violet would carry much more energy, so it would be potentially more useful for photosynthesis. And that is what we tend to find, um, that these blue, indigo, violet light, that's the wavelength of light that powers a lot of photosynthesis. Um, the other wavelengths are going to be absorbed as well. So we're going to have a whole series of, of what we'll call accessory pigments. We'll get into the details we talk about photosystems. And those accessory pigments will be absorbing all these wavelengths of light for the process of photoexcitation. What we'll get into is, well, so, but how do they do it? How do they get the the light to the chemical energy. What's going to happen is as this light is absorbed by the pigments, the electrons in the pigment molecules, I'll draw a little picture. You will not have to identify or draw structures of pigments, but I'll give you an idea of what one looks like chemically. Um, electrons in those molecules get excited, meaning they go from lower shells to higher shells, which makes them unstable. And then that energy can be given off. And if that energy is given off, it could be given off in a variety of different ways. Um, and it could be passed along to other pigments, like the chlorophyll, who isn't being photoexcited. And then the electrons from the chlorophyll could go on to actually do things to power reactions in the cell, which can lead to storage of the energy in chemicals. So it's a whole big process, um, but this is just the beginning. This is just the introduction. So... Um, this is a super generic equation, like I said. It's not like it's wrong, but it's 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 highly simplified. We're going to go into the details of the actual chemical reactions that do occur in what we call the Calvin cycle, where we see the G3P actually manufactured and where it comes from, where the carbon fixation occurs. But before that could happen, we have to find out where does the energy come from to power it, which is really going to be from ATP and NADPH. 
And those things are going to be made from electrons from the photo excitation part. So again, a lot of different things, but right now you should have some uh, vocabulary there. Photo excitation, uh, the pigments, um, the G3P, the wavelengths, and so on. So as we now get into the other parts of the structure and some of the details, you at least have a, a framework. All right. So next we're going to go into talking about uh, within the leaf, the chloroplast themselves, the chloroplast structure, and then some of the pigments, and then something called a photosystem uh, is where a lot of this is these light dependent processes are actually going to take place.